We're going to see how the stack and the heap apply when we're coding in Visual Basic.net. I'm going to start a console application because I don't want to complicate things with Windows Forms just yet. OK, so when it comes to a console application, we get a sub-main inside a module. This is the entry point for my program. Now inside sub-main, I'm going to declare a variable. I'll call it x. And I'll assign a value to it, let's say 10. And now I'm going to output that variable, and I'll just use the console right line command to do this. And to make sure that the console window stays on the screen until I interact with it, I need one more command. Nothing terribly exciting yet, but let's give it a go. OK. Because I've declared x inside sub-main, x is local to this procedure. I'm going to write another procedure now. And this procedure is also going to declare a variable called x. And I'll assign a value of, let's say, 20. And I'll output this to the console as well. And I'm going to call from sub-main. Now let's have a third procedure. And a bit of copying and pasting to speed things up. And I'm going to call call me too from call me. So I've got a very basic calling chain here. Main calls call me and call me calls call me too. Each of them declares a variable called x. Now I'm going to do a little bit more output after each call. I just need to move this command to keep the output window on the screen and let's give it a go and see what happens. Now, can you see what's going on? The main program sets a value of x to 10. It passes control to call me, which declares a variable called x and sets its value to 10. And it then passes control to call me too, which has its own variable called x. Control comes back to call me. The value of x is still 20, as far as call me is concerned. And then control comes back to main, and the value of x is still 10 as far as main is concerned. We can also see what's going on by setting a breakpoint on the first procedure of this calling chain. Let's step through it and look at the call stack. So here's my call stack and I can see that main is executing. As we step in, it passes control to call me. Call me is now on top of the stack. Call me then passes control to call me too, which is now on top of the stack. Each of these three procedures has its own stack frame, and each of these procedures has declared a local variable called x. The procedures are at liberty to use the same name, x, because these variables are all local. As we continue stepping, we can see the stack frame coming down as control is passed to each caller. This is what's going on behind the scenes. Main has control. Main declares a variable called x. The variable is in main's own stack frame. Only main can get a hold of this variable. The data itself is also in the stack frame. When control is passed to call me, call me also declares its own variable called x, and the data is in the stack frame for call me. And when call me passes control to call me too, same again. Call me too declares a variable called x, and the data is in call me too's stack frame. These three procedures can't interfere with each other's data. Now I'm going to declare a variable 
with a broader scope. I'll declare a variable called z, again an integer, but this time I'm declaring it within the module but not within any of the procedures. z has module level scope. It means I can do this. Each of these three procedures is making use of Z. Let's see what happens when we run the code. The main procedure sets a value of Z to 15. It passes control to call me. Call me sets a value of 25. And then it passes control to call me too, which sets the value of Z to 35. Now this is where control is coming back down the chain. When call me to is finished, the value of Z is now 35 as far as call me is concerned. And when sub main gets control back, it sees Z as 35. So what's going on? When sub main assigns a value to Z, a location in the heap is set aside. Sub main has a variable on the stack called Z, but this contains a pointer to the location on the heap. This is where the value of Z is stored. When sub main passes control to call me, call me also has a pointer to the same location in the heap. So if call me changes the value of Z, it's changing it for every procedure that's referencing that location on the heap. Same again, call me too is referencing the same location. If it changes the value of Z, now I'm going to declare another variable, but this time with global scope. I can do it as simply as this. In vb.net, you use the public keyword. Some languages support the keyword global. Public means global. If a variable has global scope, it means it can be accessed by code inside other modules, and indeed, other classes. I'll say more about classes in a moment. To prove this, let's set up another module. And I'll put my declaration inside there instead. I could have another subroutine in here as well. Because the variable has global scope or public scope, it can be accessed by all of the subprocedures inside my first module. I'm outputting the value of G on either side of the call to call me, so we can see if it's changed after the call. And indeed it has. Call me to set the value to 700. So when control comes back to main, it's seeing the value 700. This is behaving in pretty much the same way as module level scope. So this is the new picture. We can see Z still has its data on the heap, and each of the programs is referencing it. But this time, G is also on the heap, and each procedure is maintaining a reference to the same data. Now let's say a little about classes. I'm going to remove some of this code. Let's just tidy it up a little bit so we can see what's going on. I'm going to write a very simple class called person. And this class is going to have three properties, birthday, height, and whether or not the person is a vegetarian, so I can use a Boolean for this. Now I've been rather lazy about the way I've coded these properties. I'm just using public variables. Normally you'd have variables with class level scope, so you'd declare them with dim, and then you'd write public procedures or functions to give you access to those variables. If you want to know more about classes and properties, that's the subject of another sequence of videos. 
but this rough and ready class will do to make my point. Notice also I haven't used any strings here. I don't want to talk about strings yet because strings are a bit special. OK, in main I'm going to create an instance of the class. In other words, I'm going to create an object from that class. That's the variable I'm going to use to get a hold of the object, and this is the command I'll use to instantiate it. As I said before, if you want to know more about classes and how to create instances of them, instantiate them, do take a look at my videos on this subject. Anyway, now I'm going to set some properties of the person. Let's go for a birthday of the 11th of February, 1962. Notice the American date format here. It's month followed by day. That might feel a bit unusual to British people. Let's put a height in. I've used a single data type for the height, so I can have decimal places. And let's put in the vegetarian status as well. This person is a vegetarian. To check things are working, I'll do some output. And then I'll pass control to another procedure, call me. Call me will also create an instance of the class. Let's just copy this code and we'll change the values. And I'll do the output again when control comes back to main, just to see if anything has changed. I don't need Z here. Let's get rid of that. OK, so let's see what this looks like. Person in Maine is 11th of February 1962, a fairly short person and a vegetarian. Person in Call Me was born on the 12th of December 2000, a bit taller, not a vegetarian. And we can see here that when control comes back to Maine, it's the same person. Here's a picture of the memory. When submain creates an instance of the class, it's stored on the heap. P is a local variable, but that local variable contains a pointer to the object on the heap. When control is passed to call me, call me also has a local variable called P, which is referencing a different object on the heap. So when control comes back to main, after call me has finished, any changes that call me made to its object have no effect on the object which is being referenced by submain. It's worth mentioning now that an object variable is a reference type. The data itself is stored on the heap, and a reference to that is contained within the stack. Notice how the data within each object are right next to each other. I've deliberately used a date and a single and a boolean because these are known as value types. If they were declared as regular local variables within a procedure, the data would be stored in the stack. But because they are members of a class, the data is stored on the heap. If anybody ever tells you that a value type is stored on the stack and a reference type is stored on the heap, well, that's not quite true, is it? Here, you can see I've got value types on the heap because they're part of an object. There's one final thing that I'd like to mention, and that is the static variable. I've declared a variable inside call me using the keyword static. The behavior of this variable is kind of peculiar to Visual Basic.net. Later, I'll talk about static methods and static classes. I'm adding one to the value of s and putting it back into s, and then I'm outputting it. I'm going to put a call in from submain. In fact, I'm going to put in multiple calls from submain. Now take a look at this. We can see we're counting up. When you declare a variable as static, then it retains its value between calls to that procedure. I can only declare it within a procedure. In vb.net, I can't put it there, for example. Not a valid declaration. But if ever you need to actually have a variable that maintains its value between calls to the same procedure, this is how you do it in vb. If you think about it, 
it must be stored on the heap, because each invocation of the procedure is referencing the same value. In the next video, I'm going to use a Windows Forms application and say what the differences are between that and what we've seen here. Then later, I'll talk about parameter passing, in particular, passing parameters by reference and by value.